be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Lord be in the kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts for the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. silver or gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of anger will fail. Those who are generous are blessed, for they share their bread with the poor. Do not rob the poor because they are poor, or crush the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord pleads their cause, and the spoils of life those who despoil them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Those who trust in the Lord are mount like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but stands fast forever. The hills stand about Jerusalem. So does the Lord stand round about his people from this time forth forevermore. The scepter of the wicked shall not hold sway over the land allotted to the just, so that the just shall not put their hands to evil. Show your goodness, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are true of heart. As for those who turn aside to crooked ways, the Lord will lead them away with the evildoers. But peace be upon Israel. A reading from 
in the letter of James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Phoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he, said, he sighed and said to him, Ephaphtha, that is, be open. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Spirit. This isn't a new type of cross. It's a microphone. Well, welcome to another beautiful morning. It almost makes us wonder how blessed we are or whether we're just lucky that we're not having floods or fires or hurricanes or some of those places in our country which where COVID is racing around and killing people. It's interesting as we hear these stories of these various tragedies that we hear equal stories of people who are helping each other, helping each other to find food and water, helping each other to do this and do that, and, and yet in the midst of it they're arguing about various things. There seemed to be a division between, well, we could name ten of them, I suppose. Racial divisions, uh, anti-vax people, uh, Democrats and Republicans. Uh, you know, just, you can, you can, you read about it in the newspaper every day. And it seems that this idea of helping one another barely gets to the core of those things. And it's very interesting that our readings this morning mainly talk about just that. Discrimination between various kinds and classes of people. James and Proverbs speak specifically about the poor. How do we treat the poor? But as I think about all the other things, even 9-11 anniversary brings up the idea of who did we discriminate against after 9-11? You know, it becomes religious discrimination patterns. Strange things we're dealing with. And yet our gospel is very simply says, love one another. Treat the poor kindly and justly. Don't take away what they already have. There's an interesting little, little phrase that you might have wondered what that means. It says, The Lord pleads their cause and despoils of life those who despoil them. Maybe you didn't look up that word despoil. But what it means is you find someone that has something nice and you take the nice part away and let them suffer with what's left. That's pretty cruel. That's, pretty, that's what scammers do, by the way. They find people who have a little something and they try to take it away. And they leave them bereft of any kind of pride or money or livelihood. Despoils, taking away the best from somebody and letting them suffer with what's left. That's pretty nasty. But what it says is, the Lord pleads their cause. In other words, the Lord is on the side of those who are put upon and cheated. The Lord is working for the poor and the unfortunate and we can use that in every of those kinds of things that we just I just mentioned. It's the Lord who's backing all of the people who are being oppressed, all of who's, who's being discriminated against for whatever reason, whether it's religion or whether it's race, or whether it's the idea of wearing a mask or not. The Lord is with those who are being oppressed about these things. We need to be sure of that. The letter of James, by the way, was a very late letter written as guidance to people who were already Christian. We're not talking about the gospel before there were any Christians. We're talking about a later time. And he's saying, this is how to act. And he puts in these wonderful, wonderful phrases of be kind to everybody. But he also comes up with that very well-known one, love one another, do what you would want done to you, and then he finally gets to that last part of James, that, that crazy place where he says, faith is no good without works. And there we, we, we return to what's happening now. People are doing something about these discriminatory acts and, and philosophies. What do we do? This parish does things for the poor. This parish does things for all kinds of people who need care. That's what we call works. But so there's a great theological question between is it faith that saves us or is it our good works? 
for the last two or three Sundays, we've been hearing from the Gospel of John, and it says, all you have to do is believe. Is that the case? Or do we have to do something? The letter to James sets up a great big problem because Paul, in his letters, simply says, it is faith that saves you, not works. And so the theologians for the last several hundred years have had a great time to say, which is better, faith or works? Well, I would suggest to you that if you read James closely, he says, if you want to prove your faith, you do the works. If you really do have faith, you do the works. There's another part of one of our readings this morning that says, how does it say that? It says, is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name? In other words, James is talking to Christians and they were baptized by an excellent name. Actually, it was a rather wonderful name about glorious Jesus. He said, you're blaspheming when you don't help these people. You promised when you were baptized that these were the things that you were supposed to do. In our common book of prayer today, in our baptismal covenant, we have all these things. We will listen to those. We will help those. You can go back to the baptismal covenant and read all those things that it has everything to do with fighting discrimination and honoring the equality of all of us because we're all children of God. We're all children of God, and we should be treated that way. It doesn't matter where we come from or what we look like, or in fact, what kind of crazy ideas we have. We're expected to honor one another. There was a young man came to the step just before the service, and he said, can I come in here? And three voices immediately said, yes, come on in. That's the kind of thing that we need to be aware of. Every person that comes to those steps out there needs to be invited in. In fact, they need to be invited over their coffee hour, and we actually have it. And they need to be asked, what can we do for you? Just like... Just like the shower ministry, you know, come on in, clean yourself, feel comfortable. If, if we were to go into a theological argument about faith versus works, it would probably take us quite a while because it would lead us into what does it take to save us? And then we have to go into salvation, and then we have to go into why do we need to be saved? I mean, we could go on forever with those. But today, perhaps just simply to say what Jesus has said so many times, love one another, do your thing, and be fair. Now, if you, if you want one more example, Jesus had the greatest faith in the world, right? We know, we read about that concept. He, he had faith in his Father for everything. Faith to the moment of his death. But, he, but what did he do meanwhile? He didn't just have faith and sit there on a rock someplace in Jerusalem and say, I, I have faith in my Father. He healed people, and that's the story this morning. In fact, there's this wonderful little twist in the Gospel this morning where Jesus actually says something discriminatory. Remember what I just read? He said, we're not, we're, we're not supposed to give the food to the dogs, but to the children. And he was talking about the children of God who were Jews, because this was a Syrophoenician woman. He's actually saying, we don't treat Syrophoenicians as nicely as we do Jews. And then the woman comes up with this wonderful sentence, yeah, but the children pick up the crumbs of the dogs, and he changes his mind. If there is ever an example of how we can be wrong about something and then be right about something. It is that little story. He says, because of what you just said, your daughter is free and the demon is gone. Right there is where we should use our brain to say, if Jesus can be wrong and get it right, then so can I. That's who we are. We are the children of God. 
We are asked in every one of our Bible stories to behave ourselves. Maybe he was just saying that uh, we do, we, we don't like we, we, we start preaching. I, I, I kind of like it, but we that's, do. That's right. We should, we, should, we should notice when we're saying we don't like things and then say, how can we change that to liking them? How can we be fair about things that we don't like? We can be convinced if we listen to God through Jesus, through the, through the Gospels, through the other writings, we can be sure that it can happen. I know that some of you here in your life have been discriminated against, so you know what it feels like. But I also know that you probably discriminated against somebody. Now you know what that feels like. We need to change our whole thinking system about that. It isn't just doing a couple of things that's nice. It's changing our idea that we're all children of God. And if somebody gets on the TV and rants on about crazy stuff, we can't just say, well, I hate them. We can't do that. We have to listen just a little bit to say, how can we get together? How can, how can I help them? How can I help them become the child of God that they were born to be? What is it that we can do? And suddenly our faith becomes alive in those works. That's who we are. The children of God, baptized in his holy name, and we need to honor them. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Could you stand with me for the night nice We believe in one God, the Father of the Lord. In the power of the resurrection, let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Clement's, Rancho Cordova, Church of the Incarnation, Santa Rosa, St. Andrews and the Redwoods, Parochial Mission, Monterio. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the people of Afghanistan as they face turmoil, violence, and instability in their country. For the people of Haiti in the aftermath of earthquake and all those suffering in the wake of Hurricane Ida. We also pray for firefighters and all whose, dame, whose homes are in danger. Give them peace, courage, and perseverance. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. 
We pray for all world leaders and elected officials that they may take right action for the good of all people, especially Joe, Gavin, Mike, James, Linda, and Evelyn. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its measures, resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. We pray for rain in the season and relief from the drought that plagues this land. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for Healdsburg, Shared Ministries, and Trinity Baptist Church preparing the community meal today for a reach for home, farm to pantry, and for our own shower ministry. For all in ministry among your people throughout the world, give us the will to serve the most vulnerable among us, that with your whole church we may bear witness to the gospel in our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loved us. We pray for people throughout the world affected by COVID, for the sick, those who care for them, and those working to bring an end to this pandemic. But also ask your prayers for those who are remembering 9-11. I know some of us knew people that were there. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, for whom Christ is risen in glory, especially Pat, Sarah, David, John, Susan, Deborah, Robin, Suzanne, Alice, Christine, Tony, Carol, Catalina, Carl, Tom, Sam, Marion, Krista, Kay, Gary, Sandy, Beth, Nick, Linda, Catherine, Barbara, Jenny, Lisa, Brian, those whom you would name. May they find healing and comfort in your presence, Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who grieve and all who have died, especially Richard Kurtz, Junior Alexander, Sarah Rose Taft, Margaret Himmon, and those we now name silently or aloud. This week we remember Shirley Grist and whose member the altar flowers are given today. We pray that in Christ who triumphs over death, they may find rest in their Creator's loving presence, and that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Are there any other special prayers that are needed this morning for yourself or someone else? <clears throat> we pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us. forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Not too much hugging. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
I know most of you, but just in case uh, you don't know me, I'm David Walker, and I'm the senior warden here. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Father Ed for being with us today. It's always great to see you. And uh, I'll just mention a few of the things. All the announcements are found on page 18 of your bulletin. But let me touch on some of the most uh, recent and upcoming events. First of all, uh, the Episcopal Church has established a relief fund for hurricane victims. And there's a website you can go to if you want to donate. That's in the bulletin, and it's also on the website. So you can just link to it if you're so inclined. This coming Wednesday at the Paul Mater Gallery, we're having our um, parish potluck at evening uh, service. So we'd encourage you to come to that. It's at 5.30. Uh, on Thursday, September 9th, uh, the ECW is having a meeting at the Alexander Valley Winery at 11.30. And then Sunday, September 12th, is the kickoff of what I think is going to be a really exciting series of programs. Uh, the first in the second Sunday's music program here at St. Paul. So I'd encourage you to be there and invite all of your friends. I think this is a really exciting opportunity for us to reach out to the whole Healdsburg and Sonoma County community. Um, the rest of the announcements you can read, and of course, always check the uh, website to stay up to, to speed on what's going on here. Is there anything else that I've missed that people want to bring up? Thank you. We have some people named here that are having birthdays this week. Are there any others that we didn't get? Are these are these people willing to one more? Yes. Are these people willing? Marcella, Marion, and Donna, Linda, and Raina, and Catherine. Joe. Joe. Uh -huh. All right. Watch over your children, O oh Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them as they stand. Comfort them with the spirit of sorrow. Raise them up as they fall. Now for those others, anniversary prayer. Oh, we'll do travel first. Anybody else traveling? All right, all right. If you travel, be careful. And, and don't do this highway raid stuff. If somebody passes you at 95 miles an hour, let them go. Lord, we ask your presence with them as they travel. Whatever purpose they have in mind, help them accomplish it safely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, anniversary. Anybody have an anniversary? I guess birthdays are anniversaries, aren't they? <laughs> well, I won't read the whole prayer. God bless everybody that married and has other anniversaries that they have in mind. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offer to God. Thank you.
into our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We will his time in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting you, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray your gracious God to him to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Paul and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold and set. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses.
Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and always. 